Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. We're going to talk about XRP. And XRP's got a lot of use cases, but the one use case that I'm very often focusing on is on demand liquidity. So we are going to stay with that focus today. But I do want to tell you about my favorite uh, news aggregator site. This is a site that I use often. In fact, all three stories that I'm going to talk about today came from this. It's very good when it comes to breaking news in fintech and also crypto. It has a lean towards Asia, so you'll see a lot of stories that come out maybe 24 hours or 36 hours before they get to um, the West in mainstream media. So you, you might want to use it. It's called e-4628.com. And the first story that we're going to talk about is somebody who is trying to go after the remittance market and the corridors in Southeast Asia. This is EMQ. And EMQ is a company that is actually in um, Hong Kong and they raised $21 million and they are doing it with a variety of partners or a variety of participants actually. Those participants range from Abu Dhabi Capital to DG Ventures and Hard Yaka. Does that ring a bell? It should. That is a company that was founded by Greg Kidd. Greg Kidd is also a former Ripple compliance officer, and he has recently been on the Digital Asset Investors channel. And I think there is a really good lesson to learn in this, but I first want to take a look at who they are partnered with, which is, like I said, Tencent, and what they're going to use to grab this market, and that is the WeChat Pay. Now, Tencent is one of the world's most financially valuable companies in the world. They are in gaming, social media, and they're a very big VC. As a multinational conglomerate, they're headquartered in Shenzhen, China, and they have this WeChat, which is the world's largest standalone mobile app. 800 million users a month use their payment solution. It's really quite incredible. They just launched today, by the way, in Turkey. So here's the point that I really wanted to make, and that is these investors are completely agnostic to who they use and how they do it when it comes to securing market share. And I think it's a good lesson for all of us to not ever get caught at being a frog in the well, but to also look at other projects out there because there is going to be a lot of success stories when it comes to securing this very large market of cross-border remittances. All right, this picture, this is the Tokyo Foreign Exchange Market Commission members January 2013. And in the middle row center, this is Mr. Tomo Onishi. At that time, he was with Deutsche Bank and he was also the vice chairman of this group and the chairman of a subgroup, which was of the Code of Conduct Committee. And when he um, was working prior to Deutsche Bank. He was at Morgan Stanley with their securities department. And then before that, he was with Tokyo Bank in Germany. In 2015, he was bringing a lot of education to Japan and teaching an easy way to understand the exchange mechanisms and market structure for traders who want to learn how to trade with confidence in the FX markets. And then in 2018, he wrote a book. And this book is the theory of FX trading foreign currency asset management. It's basic fundamentals of exchange rates and forex trading. And this is when he attained the nickname Mr. FX Japan. Well, Mr. FX Japan now is the president of FX Coin. And FX Coin is the exchange in Japan that is, oh, sorry, there's Momo <laughs> scratching on her pad. He is president of FX Coin, which is backed by SBI, Sumitomo, and also the Money Partners Group. And this is an article from December when he launched. And just after this launch, there was a great big interview article that appeared and he explained why he felt that crypto needed a swap market. And swap in this case literally means to exchange, 
to buy and to sell. And you do that with the same asset. But that buy and sell, they have a different settlement dates. So you'll buy at a certain rate and then you'll set that future sell rate. Right now it's very, very common in, in FX. So for fiat currency, uh, today two thirds of all the six trillion in trades that happen daily uh, is done on a swap basis. Cryptocurrency on the other hand, uh, which has 39 billion a day done almost is done solely on spot trading. So in order for crypto to be used for real world transactions, according to Mr. Onishi, he thinks especially such as remittances for the same way as fiat, that the creation of the swap market is essential. So let's just go down here into this article and read some of the highlighted areas that I have for you. So if there is a swap market for crypto assets, companies can fix the market price of the future, of the future crypto asset. For example, a company that, that knows to send Ripple XRP after a month will fix the price of crypto assets by performing the XRP spot and swap transactions like a foreign exchange forward contract to fix the price of crypto assets in the future. You can confirm the payment amount um, for the companies and they will be able to hedge the risk of market fluctuations while still enjoying the benefits of the fast and low crypto asset. And it's wonderful as the person who's interviewing says, and what else can the swap market do? And he goes on to say, in addition, to domestic and overseas remittances, the swap market makes it easier to use crypto assets for global cash management, diversification of corporate financing, and real world transactions such as trade finance. And in addition, although this is expected that institutional investors will enter the crypto asset market in the future, the swap market, which provides a hedging instrument will play an important role for those who make medium to long-term investments in financial assets. So in other words, the swap market is indispensable for expanding actual demand transactions for crypto assets. Very interesting, isn't it? So then we bring uh, you to the blog that was in May, uh, written by one of the financial experts on FX coin. And here, he also addresses the fact that there's not enough liquidity in the crypto markets to meet the institutional investor needs. That in Japan, physical transactions, they're about $25 billion or billion yen a day right now. And institutional investors need to buy and sell without any hiccup at all. And if things aren't liquid, you can run into a problem if you're trying to sell a large amount. So for institutional investors to invest in virtual currencies, it is essential to create and nurture swaps and option markets as well as foreign exchange. So this is really an interesting take on how to grow this market. Soon after, you can see that FX Coin began looking for employees to build out the expansion of a swap and option trading platform. They advertised for eight positions. One was a manager related to the cryptocurrency, and also they wanted them to have knowledge of the financial markets, especially swap and interest rates. So I think they've gotten pretty far along here, um, but let's just take a look. Let's go to a Bloomberg article. This is Bloomberg Japan. And Mr. Onishi is talking about how he really has a vision to differentiate himself from the other exchanges. And I can see that he really is carving out a different kind of exchange. And then in May, you can see that they went to the Ripple board meeting. And the blog talks about how they took a proposal to have these major trading companies trade on RippleNet in order to accelerate the utilization of XRP for intra-group settlement of the global companies. 
So interesting. And at that board meeting, they also explained that the swap market would be created for FX coin. So they went on to talk about the advantages of on demand liquidity and with its high speed and its low cost. And you can see that even with the high speed and low cost hedging price fluctuation risk is essential to using XRP for contract based business to business payments. For that reason, the swap market is needed. Furthermore, if the swap market for XRP is developed, it will be possible to view even multi-currency global cash management, which has been difficult up to now. I really just, it's so interesting to see how he's going about um, adding value to the market and other uh, options that can, um, attract those institutional investors. So this is also interesting on a big review that was done in July. They are ranked ninth. And remember, I did a big coverage of a review that was done on SBI VC trade on the last video I did, and they were ranked fourth. And FX coin is ranked ninth. And that's out of 20 plus exchanges in Japan. So I think the fact that they just launched in December, uh, that seems pretty respectable to me. Now here I'm going to show you an article that was written just on July 22nd. This is the FX coin site and this is when they added XRP. And the senior strategist Yasuo Matsua, uh, he listed XRP as one of the hottest coins this year and reiterating that they were building out this swap market to drive the demand of virtual currencies. And now it was in this article that appeared yesterday in the coin post that was written by FX coin, but published by coin post. They talk about the swap market and how it will allow the future hedge to manage fluctuations in fiat as well as how XRP can be used as a medium of exchange for even sending Bitcoin to another country, as shown in this graphic. I'm going to show you the graphic. I grabbed it and made it a little larger so you can see. So they also see that there is a huge advantage of using XRP to move Bitcoin, for example, and they use the uh, countries of moving it from Japan to Thailand here with the Thai bot. Very, very interesting. All right, and going back to that article, you can see that um, they want to, um, let me just see if I can go up here. Yeah, okay, so they want to proceed with the demonstration of the domestic remittance and overseas remittance through XRP. And finally, we would like to expand the scope of the application to the fields such as global cash management, corporate finance, and trade finance. So I think there is a lot going on with FX coin. You're going to see that they are going to be a big, I think, uh, player in on-demand liquidity. And it is um, looking quite interesting how they want to add value to the to the space with this swap market. So very, very interesting. All right. Uh, finally, the quarterly results came out today for SBI. And there, I'm going to just talk briefly about some highlights that re, that uh, are reflected for um, impact on the crypto market. And I just, you know, if I know that you can't understand Japanese, but boy, I'll tell you, if you listen to Mr. Kitao speak, when he talks about money tap and R3 and Ripple, he is visibly energetic, determined, and confident. And he, he, said, he says that in, in this that the, he says that the uh, technology is going to be the standard with this combination. So he says, both of them together. If, I don't want to bore you because it's it's difficult, but you don't have to understand him. When you when you watch him speak about all the other subjects, he's kind of just going through the motions. When he starts talking about money tap R3 and Ripple, uh, there's just a whole new atmosphere. 
you'll have to see it. If you if you watch from this like a one, uh, the one hour, 13 minute mark to the one hour, 43 minute mark, um, it's very, very evident. Okay, let's just talk about some of the highlights that came out of that presentation today. And it's mainly a roadmap date. We've got in August happening derivatives are coming to the SBI VC trade site. And then also the B2C2, which is the market makers that was a strategic investment SBI took, they are going to integrate into the site in August as well. And in September, there is the beginning of the XRP weighted crypto fund. So the fund is going to begin in September. So very, very short time from now. And the other thing that's funny, you know, if you remember, they created this new company for esports and they're going to manage talent within the esports. And uh, they're also thinking about, uh, there's a consideration, they're going to study it, they're going to give it some thought about paying the players in XRP. <laughs> so I don't know if they're going to pay them only XRP, probably not, but maybe a portion of their salary will be paid out in XRP. I think this is funny. Um, yeah, they're going to be a basically a talent management company. They're going to manage these players, which is really for Japan. Talent management is really a big deal here. All right, everybody, let's jump to some fluff. Well, I can't help but always pulling out the very strange new norms that we're living in. If you look at this picture, it's a Chinese restaurant in Tokyo, and they have placed mannequins in the seats where they don't want people to sit so that there is this social distancing. But did they have to put a face shield on the mannequin? I don't think so. I don't know how I feel about this. This is another picture from the same restaurant. So which one are which ones are the mannequins and which ones are the real people? We've got a mannequin in the foreground, mannequin in the background, and in the middle, the couple, they are real humans. Crazy, huh? And if you ever had a, a curiosity to learn kanji, which is the character that is used in the Japanese language. It actually originates in China, but there, there's some, there's some differences, but the origin of kanji is from China. And if you want to learn calligraphy, this is Kayo Sensei. She'll teach calligraphy on Twitter, but she also gives kanji lessons and it's free and she's very, very fun in the way she does it. Let me show you an example. Here is the kanji on the left for bird. This is tori. And it is one that everybody often gets mixed up with the kanji for crow, which is karasu. And the reason being is because there is this one line in the middle here for bird, but there is not a line for the crow. And she goes on to say that if you can't remember the easy way to remember is that on a bird, you can see the eye, but on a crow, it's very difficult to see the eye, which is why there is no line. I will never now forget the difference between bird and crow. So if you like that kind of fun mental candy for the brain, uh, Kayo Sensei. I'll put a link to her in the description below. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.